The unstoppable house price surge as housing continues to rise for the 14th month in a row. Let's have a look. Hello everyone, Florian Heiser here and welcome to another episode of Heiser Says. Grab your stein of coffee, let's look at this ABC News article about housing continuing to go up. It's just, well, it's getting crazy, everyone. We looked at a a video recently from the housing affordability report that's come out of ABC and 16 years, 16 years to save for a deposit in Sydney for a median income. I, I don't know what to say to that. I mean, it's not even feasible, okay? The, the reality is saving for a house in Sydney on a normal median income is not possible anymore. So that means Sydney isn't the city for you if you're on a median income. It means you are now the rental class. You're never going to be the owner class, guys. That's Australia's changing. Australia is changing. Not necessarily for the better. Let's have a look at some asking prices in different cities to make us feel better. And here we have Sydney asking prices, guys. Then we have the weekly asking prices for Melbourne. Come on, refresh. Reload. There you go, well organized. Boom. What's that? 1.1 and 1 million. 1 million for a three better. Now look at that growth. Even if we took, okay, we'll we'll say a three bed house is a million bucks. Okay. Even if we took a 10% cut from that, a 10% correction, how far back would we be? We'd be what? $900,000. $900,000. So you'd be, what, 29, 2019? If we took a 20% cut to Melbourne property and it went down to 800000 you'd still be at 2017, maybe 2018 levels, guys. So just shows you how robust property has been. And Melbourne isn't the most crazy one. We'll bring up Brisbane. Come on, Brizzy. Okay, she's not working. Anyway, Brisbane prices are not doing much better, guys. So let's keep going through here. So Australian house prices rise for the 14th month in a row. Australian housing prices have risen for the 14th strength month, but the pace of growth in November was the slowest since January, indicating the latest boom may be nearing its peak. And I'm hearing that too. Anecdotally, talking to people, it's starting to quiet down a little bit. There's not the same amount of push. We're getting more supply on the market. So fantastic. Maybe property will only grow 3 or 4 or 5%, not 20%. The latest CoreLogic Home Value Index showed Sydney and Melbourne were driving the slowdown in growth, although Perth had an even smaller increase and prices in Darwin actually fell last month. CoreLogic noted that after a period in which There had been a shortage of properties listed for sale in Australia's two biggest cities. Sydney's listings were now back just below the five-year average, while Melbourne's were 8% above. There's slowing momentum across Sydney and Melbourne in particular, which is reflective of the fact that stock levels across these cities have pretty well normalised, CoreLogic's head of residential research, Australia Eliza Owen, said. But if you look at smaller capital cities in regional Australia, where stock levels are still around 30% below their five-year average, there is still that urgency in the market, and it's leading to further increases in momentum. So there you go. It's a supply and demand issue leading to, well, it's supply-side inflation, everyone. That's it. It's supply-side inflation. As someone said... It was possible that some of the increases in the big city listings related to Sydney signers and Melbournians selling up to move elsewhere. But it also seemed to be uh, an increase in property investors selling. We have seen a lot of the increase in for sale listings coming from some of the more concentrated investor markets in the inner city as well. So people dumping these apartments. Are they dumping? How long can they hold on to them? You know, where, where... are the international students going to come from for some of these inner-city apartments? That could be reflective of investors looking to cash out of what they perceive to be the top of the market, which could also be a reaction to the kind of announcement effect of APRA, you know, signaling tighter lending conditions. While the two big cities have reported a slowdown, growth rates in Brisbane and Adelaide still have not peaked, sitting at 29 and 25 respectively last month. 
Eliza Owen also noted that despite a slowdown in growth to 1.1% last month, Canberra was on the cusp of joining Sydney as the second capital city where a median house price was above $1 million. Well, if it's going to be anywhere, it will be Canberra because you know that's where all the civil servants live. That's our bureaucratic capital of the country. The Canberra median house value was 999755 in November, according to CoreLogic's data. Regional markets also continued to see large price increases at an average of 2.2% across the country last month and 25.2% over the past year. 25.2% over the past year. Let's look at the key points. House prices rose 1.3% nationally in November, with regional markets up 2.2% and capital cities up 1.1%. Hobart had the biggest capital city price increase over the past year, 27.7%. Perth had the smallest. Perth. Poor Perth. Poor forgotten Perth. Only 14.5%. And the number of homes listed for sale in Sydney and Melbourne had recently increased. Let's have a talk about this one, guys. Well, there you go, guys. Property increasing over 20%. Perth, the poor cousin, only at 14.5%. What are we going to do about this? It's just getting crazy, isn't it? It's just getting utterly nuts how much these houses are costing. Median income earners, you're not going to be able to buy a house in Sydney. You're going to struggle to get one in Melbourne. You're going to have to come, come to Brisbane. Well, you still can. Brisbane's going crazy too. Now we've got the, you know, the Olympics. That's probably just done to, to you know, I'm the cynical, cynic in me is thinking the whole reason we have the Olympics is to increase the property portfolios of our political class. Uh, is that too cynical, guys? Is it too cynical? Have I been looking at this stuff for too long and just getting too bitter and old? <laughs> you, you, you tell me. Because it damn well, you know, if it's anything like the Com Games, the complete and utter stuff up and disaster that was, we need to remember that. I went there. They told everyone to pretty much evacuate the entire Gold Coast because the Com Games traffic will be terrible. So everyone evacuated the entire Gold Coast. There was no one there. The games were empty. There's no traffic on the roads. I thought, you know what, I'll go down there. A mate was, had tickets to the weightlifting. We were going to go see that. And I'd do a bit of Ubering, you know, I, just now and then. I'd get a bit of pocket money. So when I was still doing it. And it, there was nothing there. There was no one there. <laughs> You'd think it would be crazy. So anyway, I mean, the issue I would say, a few things. It's, a lot of it seems to be supply. You're having people just holding off and putting it out. Maybe more stock will get on the market. But we also need to make it easier for people to build and develop. We need to address the not in my backyard crowd. We need to address the, well, the council fees and regulations. We need to address the onerous requirements in the building code. We need to address the fact that that um, negative gearing is used by so many people as a way to mitigate the huge tax burden that we have. So you've got some people who are well off earning good money who are paying no tax because they're negative gearing it. And good on them. Good on them. It's probably smarter for them to spend, you know, invest that money in property and use it sensibly than it is to let it fiddle away from the government. But I'd love to see a change to where maybe a first homeowner for their first house can live in the house and can claim the interest on that to reduce the burden, to try and get people to jump in. You know, something. We, we need, we need, you want more people owning houses, okay? You want normal families owning houses so they can settle down and increase your population. You don't want this bloody mess that we have now where a whole pe group of people are disenfranchised, can't even get into property. You know, what loyalty are they going to have to glorious Australia? They're going to all bugger off overseas. You may have an intellectual brain drain. And then they'll, they'll try and plug it by bringing more people overseas. And you've got cultural issues there. It, this whole thing is a mess. It, it's, it's a big mess. And hopefully, hopefully we can turn it around. We need to get people in homes. We need to make it cheaper and more affordable. Anyway, guys, you tell me. What do you reckon? Check out this video I did about the 16 years to save a deposit. Um, it's Dave Ramsey tells people to get 15-year mortgages for the entire mortgage. Here in Australia, we're taking longer to save a deposit. It's kind of embarrassing. Lucky country, my ass. I'll see you next time.